Hey Legionnaires, welcome back. We're here in Dawnless Days once again today. We are here with a very special video as we do have a new map for us to check out. So the lovely devs from Dawnless Days have sent me some early access files and that included a brand new map which this replay today is going to be covering. So yes, here today we are on a uh, unfortified settlement. This is a Dunland settlement here. Um, it's it's pretty simple as you can see. There's a lot of wooden huts, which is obviously kind of like well, like Dunland. I guess they're kind of going for like more of like a a barbarian sort of style look. But yes, we have Isengard and Dunland uh, defending on this one here, and it looks like you can assault from both sides if you wanted to. And I think that is exactly what Rohan is planning to do. Uh, we do have Rohan and a, and Gondor attacking in this one, so we have a bit of an alliance of men taking on the evil forces of Sauron. So yes, you can see there, uh, I, not Isengard, Rohan is going to be keeping a little sneaky force back there to come rushing up this slope if needs be. So it looks like you can defend. Uh, there's a few choke points. There's this big slope here which can be defended, uh, which can be supported, I guess, from this ledge up here from by archers and crossbows, etc. That'll be very, very handy. There's also another little slope over here. So uh, there's two access points from this side. And you can uh, you can assault up here. It looks like Dunland has this side covered for now with some Elder Spears. And then there is a, uh, a river crossing. So that splits the settlement in half. And uh, it looks like there's a couple of crossing points here. So if you, if you wanted to, you could defend just one half of the settlement. And just really like pocket yourself in the other half. I'm not sure. The cap point's on this side. So uh, I feel like you'd rather defend this side of the settlement. Which is currently being bombarded by artillery. That comes flying on in there. Yep, there you go. That's being uh, that's just coming in slowly. But yes, there is a uh, there is two the different uh, crossing points here, as you can see. So uh, they can, if they want to, uh, abandon one half of the settlement and almost just use it as a choke point area. And again, you could support your your troops with uh, archers upon this these ledges here if you wanted to I guess but yes in this one it is going to be a classic 2v2 here a little bit of a a grind fest for those choke points it'll be interesting to see how the uh, two sides do Rohan not exactly the greatest of siege factions and certainly not uh, as good on the attack but we'll see how they do in this one against their their rivals in Isengard and Dunland they are obviously the two pests that cause a lot of problems for them throughout the uh, War of the Ring. Gondor, though, here to help, you know, a bit more of a uh, an actual siege faction, and they can break through cho choke points quite nicely. They got some very good infantry in these Gondor's sword militia here. They are, uh, they are certainly very, very good, as you can see. There they go, going in now. The orders have been given. We also have Pelagian Marines back here, a nice Javi unit as well. They do some good work. Actually, the down is a sword unit now. Oh. So that is interesting. So the Pelagian Marines have changed from being a Jav unit to becoming a melee unit. They are going to keep their Javelins. Interesting. Um, I guess that kind of makes a bit more sense. A little bit more sense. It's a bit of a shame to see them lose their Javis, but that means they have less ammo now, I imagine, these Pelagian Marines. So, but that's a, that's a bit of a change there that I guess we hadn't seen before. Uh, Warriors of Loznark back in. Not the greatest of shock infantry, but it is shock infantry all the same. Prince's Coast Guard going in as well. And we have a Citadel of Guard General back there. Still awaiting that custom Gondor General. We have got a uh, uh, Rohan Onger over here. Okay. Rohan now also getting into uh, into the fight. And it looks like they're going to set up the Yeoman of the Mark. I'd start burning these towers down if you're going to do anything. Because, yeah... Uh, Archer Towers and Attila are goddamn ferocious. Uh, they they do a lot of damage, that is for sure. Um, yeah, Rohan's really got a very small army, actually, when it comes to infantry. Seems like they put most of their stuff into their cavalry. That was actually a very good hit as well from the artillery. They're burning a lot of those Bloodsworn. That is a very, very nice. It looks like slowly getting position here. We're bringing some tribal hunters up our... Uh, are done and they're going to just try and deal with these uh, Garrison the Hornburg groups over here. So they yeah, also got some good archers. These guys, I guess, double up as uh, good melee units and also a bow unit. Yeah, tribal hunters, and we also got Lurts over here, and they're all trying to just uh, do some damage to these Garrison the Hornburg. I mean, I'm focusing down the tribal hunters nicely, which is good to see. But here we go, the first clash. And it's going to be Rohan against Isengard. 
And in come the arrows as well. Start hacking and slashing, boys. Yeah, early retains. They probably won't win the fight. They are only heavy melee infantry going against very heavy melee infantry. Also, they've been battered by those archer towers. Looks like now, yeah, look at this. Urukai infantry being shot in the back as well by the Omen of the Mark over there. Really nicely done. They'll do a lot of damage to those guys there. We also have uh, Gondor archers as well contributing. And here comes another volley from the artillery. Oh, that was pretty nice. Burning some damn Uruk scum. And here comes Gondor. Gondor has actually managed to get through his first line of defense uh, without any issues because they didn't defend it. So now I'm just going to capture these archer towers and then they'll carry on on, on their way. They're going to take on Dunherd's sword, swordsman. Definitely more than a, a match for the, for the Gondor infantry. Yeah, it looks like they're now going to uh, fake off against these Gondor swords now. Uh, they're trying to lessen the angle so they can't be shot on the flank. It's always a good idea. Yeah, as you can see, Uruk's winning there. They're going to route that first uh, Rohan infantry unit. We'll have to see uh, how they do. And the next, when the next wave comes up, the artillery, I don't know what it's trying to aim at, whether it's still this Uruk infantry here. They should save it for blobs, which we'll see whether any get formed. But there you go, first unit is broken. And the Uruks, like the undisciplined swine they are, have broken formation and have attacked the second one. Whether the, the, Rohan should be able to take advantage of that, flank this unit. Enemy units have rallied and returned to the battle. Oh, are they pulling through? I don't know. I feel like there's either another order given or something. I don't know what happened there. They're getting shot in the back of these Uruks. Here comes another artillery volley. Another pretty good hit there onto the Uruks. Very nicely done. Killing a couple. I mean, look at this. They butchered this uh, Bloodsworn here. It's just been focused down by Gondor infantry. It really has. My, oh, Gondor archers. It really has. Jeez. Iron Storm is on this side as well, also getting shot in the back. Really, they should just give up this uh, defense here. It's going to be pretty hard. It seems it's going to be a very hard settlement to hold this flank here uh, because archers can just get brutal flanks over the side here and make it very, very difficult. Uh, I don't know whether they should change the cap point to this side. I feel like to make it put it on this side would be a little bit more effective. Um, just like, even if you put it like here or something, um, just to make it tougher for uh, like for the attackers. Cause this side seems very easy to take. Certainly this choke point over here, unless you dual archers really well, uh, like take out their archers with your own, then you're gonna have a tough time holding these choke points. As you can see, the Wyand Stormers here, they're a good unit. Go, like, go, good missile block. They're starting to die pretty quickly. Go back over to uh, Gondor's side because Dunland here is throwing in Blood Avengers. The toughest berserker, well, not toughest berserkers, toughest shock infantry in their roster. Gondor's infantry just plugging away, doing what they do best. Shock, shock infantry is winning. It's actually killing a fair few of these Gondor swords, which are to get everyone up actually as well, just to make it even tougher to kill them. Got crosswords up here as well, which are trying to do some uh, su do some work, but they're getting focused down as well by archers. And I think they're trying to shoot into that mass down there, but yeah, they're just dying themselves. At least they're absorbing ammo, I guess that is one thing, but they're kind of being wasted. I feel like a little bit here. And as you can see, reserves are being pulled across from this side over here to come into these choke point fights. We have got a cav generals have been thrown in Dunland's general. His uh, champion Reaver is down here, and he's probably taking a lot of fire right now. 
she's, I mean, the blood coming off these units, yeah, they're being hit hard by arrows. And they're starting to die, slowly. Yeah, there you go, they're starting to die, losing decisively. What are they sending in now? Another Dunhurd sword, good. I mean, they're running out of ammo, which is a good thing, I guess. But they probably still have enough that they could break through these choke points. That's the problem. Oh, we have Berserkers in here now as well. The iconic unit of uh, Isengard, and they're going in. And here go the Pelican Marines. It looks like some of them have thrown their jabbies. They've certainly not thrown all of their javelins. First battle for the Dunland village has been a bloody one, that is for sure. Erling retainers here, they're going to still die, even though that these uh, Urukai infantry have been focused down, they still can't break through for these Erling retainers. And a good artillery shot, um, well, for the attackers. It was a terrible artillery shot. It looks like it's hit mainly their own Erling retainers. But uh, yeah, Dunland will have loved that. Some friendly fire is what they need. Here come Berserkers, and it is starting to turn into a bit of a blob down here. Perfect targets for those artillery, which they have like one volley left. Um, so, I mean, you can either fire over on that side or on this side. Either one, there are some substantial blobs forming. And here comes the cavalry. It is revealed itself. So what do we have here? We have Rides of Rohan. Uh, we have Aemir, the uh, Knights of the House of Mark bodyguard, and then we have another Rides of Rohan. I don't know if these guys are going to realize that there's stakes right, right ahead of them. We'll, we'll see where he stops. Um, hopefully he does. Oh, he has. Thankfully. That was good. Because otherwise he could have just lost an entire unit of cav there. That would have been unfortunate. Numbers wise, it's a 1,700 defenders against about 3,000 attackers. There's about 2 to 1 odds. Seems as though Pelican Marines are slowly breaking through. Little by little. Certainly a lot of the sword inventory is spent. Bringing up pole arms now is a good idea to start bringing those guys up. They can certainly make a difference in this fight. No pole arms or well, available for Dunland or Isengard in this one. It looks like Rohan's kind of just holding off on any more assaults here. Whether he sends in his garrison the Hornberg and tries to take this choke point here, I don't know. He certainly could possibly do that. It looks like he's going to try and form like a V here, and if they counterattack here to Dunland or Isengard, he can surround them from two sides. He's playing a bit more passively now, while Gondor is still pushing. Here. They've got to keep poking away. How they get Marines are starting to lose as well in this fight against superior infantry, but so are some of the uh, defending units. Oh, well, they were for a moment. Berserkers were losing, but they're now back to combat even. And the response from Gondor is to set up shock infantry. I wonder whether Gondor should send some of his reserves over to support Rohan. Because this defense over here is pretty feeble. I mean, it definitely could be broken. I mean, oh, I think he's done what I, I would have done. Yeah, he's dismounted his troops, destroyed the barricade. Oh, he's going to either do this, he's gonna have to do the same here. But he'll eventually get through, and then his cav is in. And I don't think the defenders have realized this. So, yeah, he's dismounting his troops here. And he'll now go in and he'll go and start whacking these caltrops. Which caltrops are like, they're not this size. They are like tiny things that you like step on. These are like the size, these are like, um, like uh, 
I don't know, naval defences, like tank defences almost. You need to give it, you need to attack them, boys. Attack them. We'll go back and check on that in a moment because once that cab's through, it could be over here. Pole arms here, keep poking away. Prince's Coast Guard are the greatest of pole arms, but when there's no other pole arms available, and it doesn't seem like there's many archers, then uh, it seems like it's enough. Is the general dead? Enemy general is dead. Oh, you're kidding me. Aemo has run through the Caltrops. The Rohan is now without a general, mainly because he's just charged straight through without even waiting for his, uh, his, com his comrades just to actually get rid of the Caltrops. Okay, well, it shouldn't really matter. The Cavs should still have an influence. We will see what they can do. They could take out Dunlan's general here, assassinate him, remove uh, all those Dunlan troops. They can get a good charge off here. I mean, these are medium spears. You can certainly still hurt those quite hard, especially with the Knights of the Mark. And he's stretching them out. Go in. Here we go. I think he's going to go for it. Wasn't the greatest of charges. Actually, they did kind of form up just in the last moment, but they are killing a lot of them. Here, are we going to get a good charge? I think, yeah, Rohan should catch him. Oh, he's caught like one t one unit. That's unfortunate. I mean, he can rear charge now if he wants to. Yeah, here he goes. He's going to rear charge. I guess these guys form Bok, like square or something like that. And yeah, the champion Reaver's now going in against... Uh, the rise of Rohan here. They will probably eventually die. The Elder Spearmen don't seem like they're recovering at all from that first charge. And they're getting sliced and diced here by the Knights of Rohan. There you go. Yeah, Dunlan's general wavering. And once he's dead, could see a bit of a mass route on that front there. And you can see they're sending back some Blood Avengers now. Are oh, Dunlan, they're desperate to try and turn this fight around. They need to be quick, though. There you go. That general's broken. Rohan now could get a really good charge once his Blood Avengers come out of the water and take them out. Again on this side here, I mean, Rohan's just charged head on in with his, uh, into Dunlan's infantry here. The spears. And he's just actually, like, he's causing them to lose still. Yeah. And he really needs to get back across the river to Dunlan because now Rohan's going to be able to clear up this side here. And he... Lurtz is also under threat. I mean, he's in the river, so you... I mean, the, uh, the charge when it will be absorbed a little bit better, but yeah, they're going to be able to get alerts in a moment. The Rise of Rohan are after him now. And I mean, really, Isengard's mo got most of the troops left, and Isengard's morale will start to falter if they lose alerts. Shock infantry and spears now in the front lines with Gondor. It is looking desperate there, but they may be about to be saved here by their allies. They're going to form sheer wall, and it seems like the charge here is very much slower see there from the riders they're, they're struggling running through that water whether they're going to go around the other side I don't know they need to just attack both sides but yeah I mean it seems like these remaining uh, these remaining archers here these tribal hunters actually are starting to do some work Princess Coast Guard here are wavering and nearly dead the cab is on its way can it save the day yeah, Fire as well, doing so much to morale. Like, Axes of Loznark starting to break. We're going to see Archers start to go into combat. That's always a desperate sign for an attacker. Keep fighting, men of Gondor. Rohan has arrived. Our men have given up and are running for their lives. Wasn't a great charge either into these Blood Avengers. But it might be enough. We'll see. I mean, this uh, Rise of Rohan is already pretty beaten up. They need to get around these, uh, get around the defenders to the uh, Zaymo's bodyguard. Get into the back of this uh, this unit, these units here. Kill them. In they go, dealing with these Berserkers. They're a very light shock infantry. The Berserkers will certainly suffer from a rear charge like that. I mean, these swords, in fact, are wavering. Yeah, look at that. Blood Avengers are winning because it wasn't a great charge from the uh, Rise of Rohan. They might need to recycle that charge. Also get Aemir uh, to recycle his charge. Cav here looks like it's going in for Lurtz. Lurtz is not in shield wall. He's just busy firing. And there you go. A pretty decent charge. Whether Lurtz will fall, I don't know. 
I'd say so. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Lurz is now actually running as well. That's going to do more damage to him. Keep poking away at these uh, damn Uruks. Kill as many as you can. There you go. They've actually broken through this side here. You see the Citadel Guard are through. Cav are trying to pincer these Blood Avengers and they've done just a beautiful job of that. These elite shock infantry have no choice. You can see the general for the Citadel Guards. General for Gondor, I should say. It's going to help surround the remaining defenders down here. They fought bravely. They nearly killed off Gondor. They really nearly did. This choke, uh, this choke point over here still being lost by uh, Rohan. They still can't break through. I mean, they are winning on this side, though. That's because they got the garrison of the Hornberg in here against uh, Dunherd's sword. So it is a little bit fairer, I guess, on this side. But still, they're struggling. Rohan is literally... Good thing it wasn't two Rohan armies, because otherwise they'd be screwed. I mean, it's also not helped with morale, because... Uh, They've lost their general morale, actually. is not looking great. It looks like we might lose all the Cav here. And all of Rohan's troops just generally. Yeah, they're wavering. It's going to be a mass route, I think. And that is lucky for Lurtz, who's just about going to survive then. And balance of power is starting to even up a little bit here. It's a little guards. They need to just chase down these remaining Shock. But it's going to be a tough one for them because Shock excels against Spears. And it's just down to Gondor now. These troops over here freed up. They can uh, go back into the fight if they want to on this side here. And the what's left really is this general and some archers. There is really not much left for Gondor. It's very winnable. And the defenders still have some archers and lurts. And they still have the nasty shock here in the Blood Avengers. Which you're good at. Take some heads with them. I mean, I didn't expect this to be like a, a really close battle. I thought it was just going to be showing off like this new map, which I hope you guys have, have liked. It certainly is going to seem to produce some pretty good battles. But yeah, we've actually got a really close battle in the end here. There you go, the general's broken for Gondor. And that is going to cause a mass round, I think, for Gondor here. His archers are starting to break. And it looks like Dunland and Isengard are going to just about hold on. And that could have been all down to those Caltrops way back over there. Aema dying on those caused Rohan to break. Where otherwise they were going to win, I think, against like Lurtz. Kill him. They killed Lurtz. Then it would be Isengard mass routing, not Rohan. Rohan's actually sending in his archers on this side here. They won't last long. And just like that, Dunland and Isengard facing defeat in the face have turned it into victory. And there you go. That is today's battle. A Pyrrhic victory for sure for Isengard and for Dunland. But well, yes, we'll have a quick look at the end results here. So thank you to everyone that took part and thank you very much again to the Dawnless Days dev team for sending this one in. Very much appreciated uh, checking out these early access sort of maps. So yeah, well, this was uh, from Aragorn, Alessa's point of view. Uh, he got 188 kills with alerts. Very, very nicely done. Uh, 319 kills with these Urukai infantry. This was, must be the one that just kept taking wave after wave of Rohan infantry out. It was incredible to watch. White Hand Storm is here, still very healthy, 130 kills as well. Berserk is getting 149 kills, 234, some solid kills there. Then we have uh, Wally playing as Dunland. I mean, yeah, his infant, some of his infantry did not do well, getting focused down. 102 kills for the Dunherd Sword here. His general getting five kills. Oof, rough for him there. But his shock did excellent. 253 kills. 353 kills and the other one getting 106 kills very nice he done archers and spears yeah didn't really perform but yeah the shock saved him then we have Karpov playing as 
Uh, Rohan here, 348 kills with Aima. Very nicely done. His swords, yeah, have really struggled against the superior Isengard infantry. Yeoman of the Mark, 143 kills, 190 with the other one. And then his uh, Garrison the Hornburg getting 199 kills, the best of the two. And we have 138 kills with his Riders of Rohan here. Not too bad either. Then we have Durin playing as Gondor. So yes, we have 60, uh, sorry, 76 kills with these Citadel Guards. The brand spanking new sword infantry, that is the Pelagir Marines, uh, getting 70 kills here. And then he got 90 kills with the uh, Gondor sword infantry, the best of those ones. And then he's got Shock, yeah, 67 kills. Pole arms, 72 kills. Archers, again, really perform the most, uh, like the best for Gondor, like they did for Rohan, getting 156 kills. 138 kills, 124 kills. But there you go, guys. I hope you did enjoy checking out this new Dunland map. I certainly will have to be trying to play it once the new update is out. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what other new stuff is being added in the new update. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.